Let's talk 10 gigabit. Well, it's not really exactly time to talk 10 gigabit, or is it? We're sort of at the awkward phase where 10 gigabit hardware for ethernet is really still kind of expensive, but gigabit just doesn't feel as fast as it used to. So if you're out of the loop or not sure exactly what we're talking about, Gigabit Ethernet is the speed at pretty much which all network adapters are built. It's a thousand megabits per second or about a hundred megabytes per second, meaning that if you have two computers that are hooked up through a gigabit switch or a crossover cable or whatever that are using a gigabit Ethernet interface, you can copy information from one computer to the other at about a hundred megabytes per second. Now, mechanical hard drives today are between one and 200 megabytes per second. So for a computer to computer communication, that's pretty good. I mean, if you're in America, you certainly are not going to have an internet connection that fast, unless you're on Google Fiber, in which case I hate you. But uh, other than that, you know, you're not really going to see that interface. And even with Google Fiber, you're not really going to see a situation that's common where you're able to move 100 megabytes from A to B, because between A and B, there are going to be a, a lot of contention for bandwidth. So on the LAN, kind of makes sense if you've got a home file server or you're in a small office and people are not routinely copying huge files to the server gigabit is completely fine if you are in a situation where you're in a you know a home office or a small business where 100 megabytes per second just doesn't cut it you need to copy multiple gigabyte files or multiple people are doing that all day long gigabit may not cut it um, the way that it's currently handled uh, at least if you don't want to spend the money if you don't want to splash out for 10 gigabit is um, link aggregation with multiple one gig links. And so you might get a file server that has four one gigabit interfaces or use a, use a network card like this one. This is a Broadcom uh, four port ethernet adapter. Each one of these four ports is gigabit. You configure your ethernet switch appropriately. You configure something called link aggregation control protocol so that you've got a reasonable protocol. And if you select the right link aggregation control protocol, you can get the full bandwidth of all four connections. Now it's sort of misleading because the way that it uses all four connections is it doesn't try to use all four connections for just one computer. And so if you run a benchmark, that's only one computer talking to one other computer, even with LACP, you're not necessarily going to see a huge bump in performance. It's when you get the second, third, fourth computer, that's talking to the server that has the four port interface that it makes sense. And generally, even in a, even in a medium sized office, let's say with 20 people, four gigabit is okay. It's not terrible, but unless you're moving video files back and forth or something like that, you're really not going to see too much of an issue. So what about 10 gigabit? Well, 10 gigabit is 10 times faster than gigabit. So you're talking about being able to move a gigabyte per second. So for our setup, we've got the Netgear XS 712T which is a 10 gigabit sort of small office, home office ethernet switch. Now this switch I've been using for the last couple of months on and off with very sort of heavy things. You guys may have seen Logan's NAS recovery video where we're, you know, sort of building his old NAS died and we're sort of building the next generation NAS. We've done a bunch of experiments with that. We've done a bunch of experiments with SSDs and multiple workstations. We've done iSCSI. We've done tests on something called Fiber Channel over Ethernet, which I'm sure that none of you even care about. But it was fun to test anyway because Fiber Channel over Ethernet is a thing. So we're talking about things like communication latency, throughput, buffering, how hot does the switch get? How loud does the switch get? How do all of these pieces fit together? We also tested the ASRock X99 uh, workstation motherboard that has two built-in 10 gigabit Ethernet. We're also using 10 gigabit Ethernet with our Intel. This is an Intel fiber optic 10 gigabit Ethernet adapter. We're also testing 10 gigabit with various SANS and NAS equipment. This is also a, uh, a Marvell, what's well, a Tahuti Networks implementation of a Marvell 10 gigabit ethernet controller. And so this is, this is a little bit slower than this, even though both of them are 10 gigabit and this one's of course fiber optic. So we've got to talk about SFP plus, we've got to talk about load balancing. We've got to talk about windows server 2012 R2, the storage server edition. We've got to talk about Linux. We've got to talk about free NAS. We've got to talk about all of this stuff that has been going on. I wanted to get this done a lot sooner, but you know, Logan's NAS died. And so that took precedence. And so I've been working on that, but as we, you know, we have the technology, we can rebuild it and it will be better than ever. So you guys have seen the video, but you haven't really seen what's going on under the hood and you haven't really seen the network interface that we're going to use. Now we don't have eight editors working off the machine at the same time. So what's important to us is to make sure that our workstations can clear about five or 600 megabytes per second 
to the to the uh, the video editing station. It would be nice if it were faster, but you know, with two or three editors working at a time, potentially at most, you know, if we can get 750 megabytes per second per editor, we'll be tickled pink. But for me, because I like to do it a little bit over the top and I like to understand the algorithms and stuff that's going on underneath the hood, I was shooting for about two gigabytes per second, which is pretty close to the theoretical maximum of a dual 10 gig interface. And of course we're using the ASRock X99 workstation motherboard as sort of the core of our uh, network router or not really network router, network storage, network processing engine, I should say. We got there and not only did we get there, we got there without using buckets and buckets of SSDs. So we've got all these, <laughs> these Samsung Evo SSDs. So we could test some things with basically infinite throughput and see how that goes. But 10 gigabit ethernet, as it turns out, is a little more complicated than gigabit ethernet. With gigabit ethernet, the rest of the system is so much faster that it's really not much of a problem. The entire system can deal with gigabit ethernet because the rest of the system is fast enough to be able to do that. With 10 gigabit ethernet, it's 10 times faster, and so it's a little bit more of a struggle to deal with. Not only is it a struggle to deal with, but this is basically down to pushing packets out over a wire. It is difficult to parallelize that, and so it requires a lot of help in hardware to actually do parallelization Otherwise, you get in a situation where you've got one resource inside the computer that's basically doing all the work. And so there are mechanisms inside the computer to deal with uh, events from hardware. And so a hardware event occurs, a packet has arrived at the network. The network controller, the network card itself, this thing, I mean, obviously, it's got the components of a computer. You can see RAM, there's a processor under the heatsink. There's stuff going on here more than just a raw network interface that goes from, you know, a fiber optic interface to the system's bus to let the CPU deal with it. This one is e even, the, even the lesser expensive Tahuti Network's 10 gigabit adapter. You can see that there are components that are you know, similar to having, you know, a full computation engine on here beyond just a network controller in order to be able to deal with, with that volume of information. So in order to be able to deal with that volume of information, these devices need intelligence in order to be able to do it. Well, it turns out that with 10 gigabit in the testing that we're doing, clock speed actually matters a lot more than core count. And the reason for that is that typically these cards have provisions for working with multiple cores, but they're really optimized for, you know, four, six, eight cores, something like that. They're not really optimized for, for more than that. And you get a performance bump, the less parallelization that you have to do, at least the numbers that we're able to put together sort of bear out that you have the less parallelization that you have to do the better our two test systems that we used one was with the x99 5960x which is not really a server processor and you really should not use in a server but it was basically running at 3.5 gigahertz on eight cores and then the alternative was the xeon uh 20 e5 2630 v3 and so that's a much slower processor even even with turbo I think that's only a 2.4, maybe a 2.6 gigahertz processor. And the difference there in the per core performance in terms of being able to service the notices, they're called interrupts, the interrupts from the network card, it, it was sort of difficult. So before we dive into the nitty gritty of all that, which is gonna be spread out over several videos because we're gonna look at optimizing Linux for 10 gigabit performance, we're gonna look at optimizing FreeNAS for 10, 10 gigabit, and I'm hoping to get these videos out on a regular cadence, which is why I sort of delayed doing this introductory video. I also wanted to introduce the hardware. And so first, let's take a look at the switch we'll be using. Now you guys have seen the, the unboxing of the Netgear uh, ProSafe um, 712. This is a 12 port 10 gigabit ethernet switch. Uh, if you missed it, definitely go check that out. It's 12 10 gigabit ports basically. The two ports on the end you can use in copper or SFP+. SFP+, is typically used for a fiber optic adapter. Although if you're stacking these, so if you've got two of these switches and you're going to connect them together with these SFP+, ports, you don't have to get a fiber optic adapter and then use a really short fiber optic cable. They actually make cables that have these SFP plus connectors on them and it's just it's just a short cable, typically a one meter, three meter, 10 meter cable that you get and you, you plug in there. But for our testing, because we've got some, some of these awesome Intel fiber optic 10 gig NICs laying around, we're gonna use those for testing. And then we're also gonna use the built-in Intel X540 NICs on the ASRock X99. And then we've also got a couple of these Tahuti Networks 10 gig adapters, and so we're gonna use those as well. 
So of course, the cornerstone for doing these experiments with 10 gigabit is of course the Netgear XS712T. There's a link in the description that takes you to the unboxing video and we take it apart because the thing is entirely heat sink on the inside. This is a fairly high end piece of equipment for this type of thing. Now, 10 gigabit, I mean, of course there's higher end stuff, Juniper Networks, Cisco, crazy stuff like that. Um, this is not aimed at that market. You know, those that equipment is designed for use in the enterprise where people have thousands of them and there's automatic provisioning. Honestly, this device has a lot of features that are really comparable to the higher end stuff. Um, it does not have a serial console, like a physical serial console, although I think it's got a connection for one on the inside, but they opted not to put it on here. I think that they're trying not to compete with their own higher end products because Netgear obviously makes uh, more expensive products aimed at the higher end of the market. But this is a 10 gigabit ethernet switch and it really sort of sits the line between small medium business and more, more enterprise business stuff. It is only 12 10 gigabit ports, but that makes a pretty good setup for a small business that has a 10 gigabit need and they wanna connect you know, their key workstations and their, their server and things like that at 10 gigabit. So we're gonna take a look at the web user interface for it. The web interface lets you configure advanced options. If you guys have ever bought an ethernet switch or you know, you buy a router and you plug it in and it's got some ethernet ports on the back of it, and you just, it's plug and play. Ethernet has, has basically always been the most plug and play thing that has ever existed pretty much until you go all the way back to like a BNC cabling and then BNC was not exactly plug and play, but it, it was pretty close. 10 gigabit is like that. It's like plug and play, but if you want to squeeze maximum performance out of it and you want to really organize your network, you need to configure a lot of options because the switch is basically uh, the thing that connects all the other stuff on your network. It is the central component of your network. And these switches have a lot of intelligence. They can do network segmentation. You can set up VLANs. You can set up all kinds of really clever, interesting stuff. And because Netgear recognizes that people may be using this as a core switch as part of a much larger network, they're giving you some of the enterprise features or some of the higher end features like setting up VLANs that you typically don't get on switches that, that don't have a web interface. So the very next video on this series, which is probably already posted, is going to be about that. Now, Different subjects are gonna show up on different channels. You know, we've got the hardware channel, the main channel, which is where the how-tos are gonna be, the Linux channel, all this stuff. And so all these videos, depending on what the subject are, are gonna be on different channels. But in the description, there are links, and if 10 gigabit interests you, I would suggest that you subscribe to each of our channels. Plus also we appreciate having you subscribe to all the channels and watching all of our videos because that's really good for us and you should totally do that. So without further ado, let's take a look at that Netgear switch. Mm -hmm. 